kid. We can do this the hard way, so we can do this the fast way. I don't want no smoke, bro. Check it. Check it, bro. Bro, I don't got nothing to hide. What you looking for, bro? But it's not in there. Look. Nothing to hide, huh? <laughs> Come on, bro. What is that? What is that? That's not mine. Yo, why would I use that? I'm an athlete, bro. Why would I use that? Told you I'd handle it. One of the primary tenets of the old Fresh Prince that they're continuing in the new Fresh Prince is humanity's ability to understand what it's like to walk in the life of someone else from a different perspective. You got Will coming from the hood, being in a life of luxury and richness, and you also have the people who are rich getting to understand what the plight of those in the hood are going through. And I just can't wait for that shoe to drop on Carlton's head in the new Bel Air that just because you're black does not mean, excuse me, just because you're rich does not supersede you from being black. And when they finally drop an event on Carlton's head that makes him realize being rich doesn't absorb you of being black, that is going to be an earth shattering moment for this poor boy. He already has an Adderall addiction and I can't wait to see where else they take this story. This is going to be my episode two review and people that are still in the show for me. Number one, Jabari Banks is Will Smith. This brother's got talent. But number two, and I can't even say sneakily because she is knocking out the part. The lady who is playing Aunt Viv, man, Cassandra Freeman is her name. And when I tell you she knocking that shit out the park as Aunt Viv, her fine ass is knocking this shit out the park. I mean, loving everything about her. From the voice sounding just like Aunt Viv, that beautiful brown skin to them nice thick curves, and she is a hottie. And this is going to be my breakdown for episode two of Bel Air. Finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you all get them. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Always notice that on my channel, I'm doing interviews with a lot of different people. Next Monday, 7 p.m., I've got Peyton Ashbrook. She plays Jenny on Power Book 2. She's coming through. And this Friday at 9 p.m., Real Deal Trial Attorney is coming through to just talk to you guys about why you might need an, a trial attorney, defense attorney, and what's real and what's fake when it comes to TV. In the very beginning of the show, they just pick up, pick up on where the fight left off with Will and Carlton, and someone recorded it, and Aunt Vibe is trying to console Will and Carlton. And at first, it just really seems like in this whole episode, everybody's just coming down on Will like he was the one that done something wrong between him and Carlton. Will didn't know the backstory of Carlton and Lisa until it was told to him. And so Carlton Herman Kane punk ass pushes Will in the pool. And ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. If you ever wanted to see what Herman Kane looked like in high school, well, there you go. It's him right here as Carlton on the Fresh Prince. And Will is just kind of trying to figure out what the hell is everybody on my back for? I'm the one that got pushed in the pool and could have drowned. I can't swim. And then in the flip side, Carlton feels like mom is taking Will's side. But mom quickly understood, I mean, excuse me, Aunt Vi quickly understood what went down with Carlton. And she told him, look, I know why Will behaved the way he did, but what about you? Next thing we get Uncle Phil and... Again, I'm still trying to warm up to this Uncle Phil. And this episode actually made me warm up to him a little bit. But in this first scene, I wasn't feeling him just because it still seems like he's coming down more on wheel than what I feel like he should. Because he's only worried about the ramifications of that video messing up his campaign. And why I say I love this Aunt Bill is because she's the voice of reason and she's hot as hell too. So her reason is always going to be right most of the time. She steps in and she says, look, bro, this campaign ain't just about you. This campaign is about the whole entire family, which includes Carlton. Uncle Phil, being a reasonable man, seemed like he bought that and said, let's go talk to Will. 
And when they do go talk to Will, my man is in there crying because his boy Trey got shot, which we, we all saw that coming. You didn't need your Stevie Wonder glasses on to see that, nor the Hubble telescope. You knew that was going to happen. And I'm just wondering, are they going to let this beef come from Philly all the way to Bel Air? That could be the point of reckoning for Carlton um, when they might be having to defend themselves and they get pulled over and we have an issue where the cops treat Carlton unlike what his Bel Air Preppy Academy is treating him because right now he's the man in school. But I'm waiting for that heel turn in Carlton because at some point in time it's going to happen. We get them having a first breakfast, not the last supper, eating together, and we learn that Hillary and her social media lights, the Hillaristas, follow her because she can cook. She puts a good spin on her food, and she's talking to mom, and mama's just giving her some advice about making her food unlike her own, and Hillary's letting her know, I want to have my own identity, and that's when Uncle Phil chimed in and he agreed. So I'm starting to soften on him. This was the moment I started to soften on him. And I really like the exchange they had at this dinner. It was fun. It was cool. And it just tells you that this family has a lot of dynamics going on. And I'm wondering what are they going to do with Ashley's story? Because, like I said, she is a flaming liberal, and I'm loving it. And then we get Will talking to Carlton, just trying to smooth it over. Carlton's begging him for an apology, and Will's still doing like I'm saying. Bruh, you pushed me in the water. I could have died. Carlton lets Will know I'm the effing man at the school. Let's see how you deal with school, but first you got to get a ride there. And that's when Aunt Viv comes in and lets Will know, look, bruh, you made a bunch of mistakes. You know, you pulled a gun on a drug dealer. Big mistake. And you probably shouldn't have got up and decked Carlton. Another big mistake, but people, I disagree with that one. Will can't swim. Carlton doesn't know whether Will can swim or not, and he still pushed his ass in the pool. Anybody in their right mind whose life was just threatened is going to get up and deck somebody. If you got two solid pair of balls, you're getting up and you're going to deck whoever pushed you in that pool. And that's what he did. But mom is, the overall message she's trying to teach Will is, you got to think before you react. Think that there's going to be life beyond that moment. And that's what she's doing when she's telling him to drop the street shit, which you see a turn in wheel. He's doing that. And so now Aunt Vibe done gave him the keys to a hot ass Lexus, ladies and gentlemen, smooth car. Will gets to school, not understanding the way everything goes because Carton is being the Herman Cain Carton asshole that he is. Will gets in school and everybody's at an assembly. He doesn't know that. Carlton's actually having to speak in this assembly. He gets chased by this QAnon looking mf all the way to the stage where Carlton is giving a speech. And he tells, he calls this guy by his name, Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. Carlton thinks it's all good. And basically Carlton is, um, Will is on stage with Carlton and Carlton takes a moment to get the crowd to applaud and welcome Will, just hamming it up in true fashion that black Republicans tend to do when they get in these crowds where they're the only black person, they get this feeling of leadership, this feeling of I'm the man until they black asses get pulled up by the police who don't know they are part of these special French clubs and golf clubs and shit like that. And in essence, he belittles Will's old school in Philly, saying that they don't go do sabbaticals and fucking radicals around the world and all this other stuff that they're doing. And he wants to make poor schools in California a new pet project. And Will wants to grab the mic. Carlton pulls it away. Will goes away, continuing to show some more moxie. He bites his tongue. He keeps it moving. And then we get Uncle Phil, who's at a radio station, cool radio station, where he's talking and taking questions about what's going on with his campaign. And for whatever the reason, everybody that's calling, they're more concerned about where he lives and how much money he has versus what is he going to do for the community in the campaign. This is real life all day because a lot of people who are hurting, who are in pain, who are in poverty, instead of thinking about what it is that this candidate can do for me from a political perspective, they're more worried about the trappings you have surrounding your situation. But 
we start to see more and more that Phil is down for the cause. Even though he's made it, even though he's playing the role that he's trying to play to get where he needs to go, he's showing you guys he's down for the cause, and this was the beginning of seeing that. We get on to the coach. Now, if you guys remember the first Bel- Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the coach was goofy as hell. <laughs> I like that coach. He was goofy. This guy right here, he's not goofy. And he tells Will, I don't give a damn that you was a D1 recruit. You still got to try out for this team. And I really don't want you on the team because you've got some baggage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you right now, sports is one place where – Black athletes and athletes in general can get away with a whole lot of bad behavior because they are basically putting you on the cash cow sharecropping to play sports because that money talks and the bullshit walk. But for whatever the reason, this coach ain't having it. He don't give a damn about that, and he's going to make Will try out. I actually admire that they put this in the story. But ladies and gentlemen, most of the time, this is not real life. We see Will talking to Lisa, just getting an understanding of what Carlton, what Carlton really is. Because Will can't understand how the hell is Carlton the man at this school. You know, he's the black Don Granwada. You know, he's the man. And Lisa's just telling him that, you know, Carlton's charming. He remembers people's names. He does a lot of things that people do in polite society. And on top of that, he's black, so he's an oddity in this school, which makes him the man in the school. Because you go to places like this, if you're a black person, you know how to use grammar and use big words. A lot of white people, number one, they you know they kind of feel like, oh, damn, this dude is special. Do you guys remember how Joe Biden was talking about Barack Obama being able to articulate his words and all that as if that's something black people can't do? So when white people see that, sometimes they put their arms around you and they want to uplift you. And basically, Will's asking Lisa, look, I need you to help me out with this beef. Carlton is lying to everybody about what really happened. I want you to help. And Lisa's like, that's going to put my ass on the line. But she winds up doing it anyway, like a true G. Then we get another one of these extremely telling, telling scenes where this is a decision a lot of people in the past that are black, have had to make. Some of them had to sacrifice. But in today's generation, with all the technology and things we have, you don't have to do this as much, but you still do. Aunt Vi got Hillary a meeting with this culinary group, and it could really put her on the map. Hillary makes up a great dinner for them, and they want to talk business. But the business they want to talk, Hillary and her pink ain't trying to hear it. They want Hillary to sacrifice her attire, sacrifice the ingredients of her food to appease a white audience. Ladies and gentlemen, this still continues to happen today. And Aunt Viv came in later and said everybody has to make compromises in life. And Aunt Viv is 100 percent correct. But Hillary has some bones to her merit as well. So let's talk about this. Number one, as a YouTuber, I'm always trying to appeal to the greater audience. The greater audience is not black people. The greater audience on this YouTube platform is white people. And so you do want to get them so that you can grow. This company is trying to appeal to their greater audience, which is white people. And they want Hillary to conform to that. And she's like, hell no. And see, in Hillary's situation, she don't have to because she's already coming from a rich family. The average person who might can get into this opportunity would not be coming from a rich family. And let's just keep this in mind. The only reason Hillary got this opportunity is because her rich family put the opportunity in front of her. And so Hillary has the option to say no. Had this been given to someone struggling in the hood, someone struggling in middle class trying to make it, you probably would have conformed. Because what other choice you have? You just going to keep waiting in poverty? No, you would conform a little bit, get your name out there, do, you know, ride this contract till it's over with. Then you go back to being your brand. And later on, she talks to her mom about this. And the mom is just basically told you guys what I said. And then Hillary throws a dig at the mom saying, like, you sacrificing being an art teacher instead of an artist. Hillary, 
that's your first ding for me. You ain't had to go there with her. And at the end of the day, Aunt Vi bit her tongue and said, Hillary, it's your life. I'm going to support you wherever you go. And then we get Will meeting up with Connor punk ass, who's done took out a restraining order. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, Will, Uncle, Uncle Phil was able to get Connor's family not to press charges because he had to make some contribution to their damn um, hedge fund. And now they still playing this bull jive game because on the flip side, Uncle Phil told them, look, I'll do that, but I want you guys to keep in mind this. I can get y'all for having drugs and alcohol at a party with underage kids. Okay, so keeping that in mind, Connor done got a restraining order on Will, and Will's got to stay 10 and 50 feet away from him. And then after Connor makes that point clear to Will, Will sees Carlton get in his face and try to get him to fight him. We see Will maturing again because Will says, no matter what I do, I lose. And so he made a decision to just walk away and not do anything in this moment, which had to be hard as hell to do, and you know it. We then see Will playing basketball with the new DJ Jazzy Jeff, looking like DJ Jason Weaver in a young back in the day. And Will is just trying to get himself together for this basketball tryout, and he's just having these flashbacks of everything that happened back in Philly and Jazzy Jeff is just trying to get him to console with him and let him know what's going on because right now Will hadn't got any counseling for what happened. I don't know um, if they're going to wait for that to happen, but I 100% see some counseling happening with Will to help him overcome some of those things that got him to Bel Air in the first place. We see this fine-ass Aunt Vi and fellas, look at them damn curves. Cock to be more careful. That is a piece of work. Getting a phone call from Will's mom, who is a nurse working in the hospital, and she is not in a, a particular mood to talk. She is very upset that Will's getting into it with Carlton. And Aunt Vi consoles her and lets her know that we're going to get this job done. Um, Will's mom tells them that he's going to have to stay out there a little while longer because of what's going on. So this is just the very seedlings of Will going to wind up staying here permanently because when is the heat going to ever die down, you know, from the hood and what happened? It's not. So Will is going to be here, and this is just kind of them letting us know that this is going to be ongoing with Will. He's going to be here a minute. We get the new Wakanda Forever Jeffrey talking to Uncle Phil and just basically letting Uncle Phil know, you got to meet Will where he's at, man. You know, look at what how I had to adapt. I went to Jamaica and from Jamaica to London to here, and I had to adapt. And I like this relationship that's going on between Uncle Phil and Wakanda Forever Jeffrey. Great relationship. You can see Jeffrey cares about Will, and he put Will in a good spot with Uncle Phil. And so Uncle Phil takes his advice goes out to the basketball court. They get to know each other. And that relationship that we wind up seeing between Will and Uncle Phil in the old show, this is the very beginnings of that happening right here. We learned that this basketball court was supposed to have been for Carlton, but Carlton wanted to race cars and get into lacrosse. And we see that Uncle Phil still got some hooping in him. He still can hoop a little bit. And I think Will is starting to see that even though Uncle Phil is rich and he's made it, He's still a real G. He know where he's come from. And this was a moment of helping Will as well. This was kind of some of that counseling therapy Will needed. But all while that is going on, oh, Carlton Herman Cain is in the background getting more and more jealous because he see the writing on the wall. He see Will is going to wind up being the man. He's going to be phased to the background. And he ain't trying to hear this shit, man. He is mad. He ain't feeling it. Will gets a moment to talk to Trey, and we learn Trey is still alive. He's got a flesh wound, and Will is kind of telling Trey, I wish I would have been there for you. And ladies and gentlemen, this was an example of a good friend. Trey said, what the hell you want to be there for so you can get shot too? This is a damn good friend. And he's really trying to see Will make it. So if Will make it, we all make it. I know you will look out for me once you make it. So this is a great friend trying to support Will who's in a better position to do more and I appreciate them having Trey in here to do that. And we don't forget, we're going to see Trey out there at some point in time. And then we get Lisa talking to punk-ass Herman Cain Carlton. 
just trying to get him to smooth things over with Will. He's not trying to hear that. And we see Carlton got some damn Adderall on his nose, which leads us to believe this is more the reason why Lisa dumped his ass in the first place because he has a drug addiction problem. And for those of you that don't know, Adderall is very similar to cocaine in that it is a, a stimulant. It gives you a feeling of euphoria. Um, this has been called white people's drug too. And a lot of people take Adderall to move themselves up in um, situations that might need more focus, more, you know, mental acuity. So she catches him doing that and she's like, oh yeah, I made a good decision. We see Will making a good friend with my man Tyler right here. And Tyler just gives Will the rundown of what he needs to do to impress Coach. And this is going to be a great relationship. I see it coming. This is going to be one of Will's top friends that's going to help him get through class. And I like Tyler because he broke down that time is nothing but a human-made construct of capitalism that made laborers work. That was funny. And then we get Hillary talking to her Hillaristas about the company that tried to conform her. And this is what I mean when there is a difference between nowadays and my parents' days of having choices. Because now you have a microphone, social media, and a platform that when people do you wrong, you can get your name out there. So I'm interested to see if the company is going to see this, catch an attitude with Aunt Viv, or would they see this and decide, you know what, we, we need to open our business up to a broader audience and bring Hillary and her Hillarysters on. Will goes to the basketball tryouts, and of course you knew he was going to make the team. He impressed the coach. And then he goes in there into the area where only athletes are supposed to be, and Carlton is in there mad as hell. Like, what the hell are you doing in here? Will's like, bruh, I done made the team. So I get to be here, and Will lets Carlton know in that moment, I'm going to be taking over Bel Air. You can say whatever the hell you want to say. You can act how you want to act. This is going to be my spot. Give me time. And then we get to the end where we see old QAnon cop chasing Will again, going through his bag, and Will's like, I ain't got nothing to hide. But all of a sudden, my man pulls out either crushed up Adderall or cocaine. Either way, he's taking Will in, and as they taking Will in, we learn that Connor planted this shit, and Carlton is standing there looking like, oh, okay. And Connor is enjoying this shit. Hopefully, they've got a video camera up in the school so that we could have seen when he planted those drugs. And hopefully, when we get to episode three, Uncle Phil, Aunt Vi will understand this was no doing of wheels. And did you see the way Carlton was looking at Will as the police is taking them away? I think this was a moment where Carlton was kind of like, okay, this is going too far. Now, Connor, you my man and all, but this is my cousin. He's trying to change. I think this was an inflection point for Carlton, but I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Please comment, subscribe, get yourself that life gain. Follow me on all my social media. I got IG, I got Twitter, and let me know how you guys are feeling about this show. For me, this is an instant top five best thing on TV right now. Really encourage people to watch it because it brings in all the social dynamics that are going on in the world from the perspective of minorities, and it does it in a good light to give you a good lesson. Will, you got a hit on this one. And until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.